right, it is time, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all for being here at our English Plus session of Symposium. We're excited to have seven presenters today to share their English Plus stories with you. But first, a couple of announcements. Um, don't forget, there is a QR code, code on the back of your program uh, that we want you to use to complete an evaluation of this session, okay? That'll help us know how to plan for future symposiums, so please take a few minutes to do that. Uh, secondly, we have a, an event next Thursday, so if we go to the next slide. We are hosting four alumni from our department, students who have graduated, um, I think within the last maybe 11 years. Maybe we have one that graduated like 11 years ago, a couple that, that graduated only three or four years ago. And you can hear what they're doing in their various professions and um, ask questions. It's a great opportunity to get a sense of where your degree can take you and what that path might look like for you. So I have flyers that you can take there on that back, uh, what do you call that thing, that back rostrum thing back there, if you want a reminder to grab to take with you. Next Thursday, 11 o'clock in um, B92, which is the one at the other end of this building. Okay, so we are um, talking about English Plus today. And English Plus is an initiative within the department to help students fundamentally translate and then narrate their experiences. We do such great things in our classes. We talk about such wonderful ideas. We focus on writing, um, but sometimes other people don't understand what that translates to outside of an English classroom. So English Plus gives students the opportunities to take the skills that they've learned within their English studies, apply them in a setting outside of academia, and then learn to talk about those skills in a way that's meaningful in a variety of contexts. So that's just a brief introduction of what English Plus offers. Now you get to hear a little bit about what it looks like in the lives of actual students. So today we're going to hear from these seven students, and this is the order that they'll go in. This is brand new for them, so they're, I'm giving them a minute to, to see where, when they're coming up. Um, there'll be a little transition time between each one, but, and then we will have time at the end for questions. So please be thinking throughout all these presentations what you'd like to know more about. Maybe there's a specific situation you'd like to learn more about, um, or bigger questions about preparing for an English Plus experience, etc. So keep those in mind. Um, we're using what's called the Ignite format for these presentations. The slides will automatically advance, and so students kind of, they get to keep moving on their presentation. Um, but it creates a, a nice, fast-paced, really nice, compact uh, format for you. Go ahead and come on up, Julia. So our first presenter is Julia Dixon. Grasmere, England, sleep-deprived, hangry, and confused. I stepped off the bus onto a green and gray landscape and felt a humid mist wash over me. After hours and hours of travel, I was finally where I was supposed to be, right? The first couple weeks of my internship, I was convinced I'd made a colossal mistake. I wasn't cut out for international living, I'd never figure out public transport, and I was surely going to fail at whatever tasks my supervisors gave me. Even worse, I was going to have to confront my deadly fear of public speaking on the daily in order to give Dove tours of Dove Cottage, the house poet William Wordsworth used to live in, and one of the main attractions of the site alongside a museum and research center. Those first couple weeks, I would walk around Grasmere Lake frequently, wondering how on earth I was ever going to make it through this. Even though everyone there spoke English, the culture shock was still very, very real, and I felt lost. If anyone here has seen the movie Austin Land. If you haven't, I highly recommend it. Um, then you probably have an idea of what I was going through. At the time, I had built up a grandiose idea in my head of what this experience was going to be like, um, only to be confronted with the possibility that maybe I had been a tad unrealistic in my expectations. However, just like the protagonist in the movie, I came to realize that my success depended on me taking control over my situation. 
As I became more comfortable, I realized that I actually already had most of the skills that I needed. Public speaking, I took English 328R Studies in Composing. Romantic Literature and Poetry, I took English 292 British Literary History. Writing professional emails, I took Intro to Professional Writing English 323. So I'm here today to promise you that no matter what anyone tells you, um, the English major does in fact give you valuable job skills, skills that you can use. One experience in particular that was eye-opening to me was when my supervisor asked me to, with help, putting together an exhibit on Dora Wordsworth, William Wordsworth's daughter. Granted, it was a very small exhibit, but I was still very excited to be involved. I was in charge of writing all the labels for the exhibit. And the trust had very specific requirements for their exhibit labels. Each one had to be 50 words or less, with one introduction label of less than 100 words. So not a lot of space to communicate in. Luckily, this was just what I trained for. As I drafted and polished and proofread those labels, I used every ounce of my writing and research skills. I had them all done and finalized in under 24 hours, much to the delight of my supervisor. Another great experience I had was getting to work on DCMS 120, which is also known as Dorothy's Commonplace Book. This is a notebook that belonged to Dorothy, William Wordsworth's sister, and it's an artifact that really hadn't been looked into much before. The project itself was an unexpected opportunity. The head curator at the trust came to me during my first month there and said, I've got something for you if you're interested. I agreed before even knowing what it entailed, and it ended up becoming much, much more than just this one project. Initially, I was in charge of organizing volunteers to transcribe the notebook using a software slash website called Transcribus, but after becoming so invested in DCMS 120 and all of its interesting contents, I ended up taking my project back here to be with me. I worked with Dr. Westover here in the English department to create a directed research class where I continued to learn about this notebook with the aim of writing a research paper based on what I've learned, which I plan to submit to the 2023 Wordsworth Summer Conference this year. Given how overlooked DCMS 120 has been in academia until now, my professor thinks I might be one of the world's foremost experts on this niche notebook. A pretty cool thing to get out of an internship, if you ask me. My internship was one of my greatest experiences here at BYU, and just in general. I loved working at the museum, being surrounded by art and culture, even giving those tours, and talking to people from all over the world, working on cool projects, and getting to know my incredible and inspiring co-workers. Not to mention the amazing landscape that I got to live in and all the great hikes that I got to go on. But I think one of the most important things that this internship gave me was the confidence that my major was in fact preparing me for my future. These are the humanities competencies, which to be honest, I didn't know what they were before my internship. <laughs> Um, but I can say with confidence that I used skills from and was challenged in every single one of these areas while I was in England. Everything I learned here at BYU through the English major helped me have a successful and rewarding internship that honestly changed my life. So my parting advice for all of you is to anyone thinking of doing this internship or any other internship or any English Plus experience, please do it. Thank you. I am a senior. I will be graduating here in April. I'm an English major, obviously, um, with a minor in American Indian Studies. And usually when I introduce myself like this, people ask, oh, so what do you want to do with that? Or you must want to be a teacher. Um, I don't. No disrespect to teachers. Some of my favorite people are teachers, but it is just not the path for me. Um, to people with these questions, I want to point them to the internship that I have done for BYU Arts Partnership. Um, I have been an intern with them for about two years under an organization called the Native American Curriculum Initiative, or NACI for short. Um, NACI is a program that creates arts-based, tribally approved lesson plans about the eight sovereign nations here in Utah. Um, these lesson plans are not only taught here in Utah, but are taught across the country. Um, my first project that I worked on 
for an easy was a dance-based lesson plan um, concerning the social issue of missing and murdered indigenous women. Um, I worked one-on-one -on -one with a teacher who was trying to create a dance-based lesson plan to teach to middle schoolers about MMIW. Um, and for those of you who are unaware, MMIW is a social issue um, that is trying to raise awareness of the fact that indigenous women and girls are more likely to go missing or be murdered compared to women of other races. Um, so this project was really impactful for me because I was able to learn that I'm not good at dancing, <laughs> but also that children are capable of learning and understanding these really heavy issues um, in really artistic and creative ways. My next project that I worked on, um, I was able to read through an ethno history of the White Mesa community um, down in southern Utah and Colorado. Um, I read through this whole book. It was a big textbook, basically, and was able to take notes on it. Um, one thing that I really loved about this project was how portable it was. I was able to do my research anywhere from the Wilk, or my apartment, or the beach, or hiking in St. George. Um, but one of the best things was I was able to take it actually through White Mesa uh, lands itself. I was really lucky to go on a road trip with my sister this summer through southern Utah and Colorado. Um, and I'm sure that I bored her to death uh, with just hours on end of facts about the White Mesa community. Um, and this project was really impactful because I learned that no matter where I am, I am always on indigenous land. Um, and that the things and the people that I study are more than just statistics or words on a page, but they are real people with real stories. Uh, the most recent project that I worked on was a Native American children's literature project. I read through these crates of books and was able to review and take notes on them. Um, this has been especially important because ever since I can remember, I have wanted to be a writer, and I've especially loved children's stories. Um, but this project has made me realize that there is a severe lack of representation of Native Americans in children's literature. Um, so this project was especially important to me because it inspired me to, con to, to continue to want to be a writer, um, but it has changed what I've wanted to write and how I've wanted to write about it. It's made me want to fill that gap in the critical conversation. Um, outside of my own research, I've also been able to um, engage in more community-based projects. Um, I've been able to attend the powwow here at BYU, as well as go to the uh, Governor's Native American Summit up in Salt Lake. Um, and interact with community members in that way. I've also been lucky enough to attend actual classrooms um, and watch as teachers have uh, taught the NACI lesson plans and I've been able to watch as students have interacted with those um, and seen how much fun they've had. These experiences have been so wonderful for me because I've been able to um, interact with real people in really fun and interesting and unique settings and um, I've been able to have opportunities that I wouldn't have been able to have anywhere else. Um, and meet new people that I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, so back to my question in the beginning, what can I do with a degree in the humanities? I can teach, yes, I can dance, maybe, but I can also travel and read and write and research. But I found that the more important question is not what I can do with a degree in the humanities, but what I can learn. The things that I have learned with NACI and through my internship with them these last couple of years have been absolutely invaluable. I never would have been able to learn um, how to navigate a culture as well as I have um, with NACI. So to steal another quote from Elizabeth Barrett Browning, um, I have loved my humanities degree with the tears, smiles, and breath of all my life. And I can promise that if you get a degree in the humanities, it will take a lot of your breath and smiles and tears, but it will be absolutely worth it for the things that you learn. So thank you. Yeah, heads up, I'm a chatterbox, and so are my slides, so if there's a lot of text, don't worry too much about that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Logan Johnson. I'm a transfer student from Utah Valley University. Um, I moved to BYU in 2021 specifically to engage with some of the things that I'll be talking about today. Um, my main experience that I had an opportunity to do with English Plus was working with the Research and Writing Center. Um, I got introduced to this in a couple of ways. First, I got introduced to English Plus generally through my Ways of Reading class in winter 2022. Um, and then a couple of my friends in my Writing with Style class all applied. And so I was like, you know what, I will go for it. Um, so what is the Research and Writing Center? It is a collaborative space 
uh, where BYU students can get help with their papers and tutors fo can focus on all stages of the writing process. Um, but as we'll talk about, it can get a little bit more in-depth than that. Um, it's also a place where students can develop writing skills across the curriculum, and it's also a space where we provide resources uh, to help multilingual writers at BYU uh, thrive and grow and progress. One of my favorite things has been working with that community here at BYU. Um, one of the questions that I encountered as part of my internship at the Research and Writing Center uh, dealt with what else can the Writing Center be um, and what does that mean? Uh, but we'll talk more about that a little bit as I get further into my presentation. Um, so what was working at the Research and Writing Center like? Well, first of all, it was three months of paid credit-bearing training, which was awesome. Um, the pay, especially, <laughs> happy about that. Um, with guided study and hands-on tutoring experience. Here's my shameless plug. The Research and Writing Center is currently hiring new tutors for this internship, so if this is something that interests you, I recommend going to the third floor of the library, looking at the map, finding the Research and Writing Center, and talking to the front desk because they'll be able to provide you with plenty of information. Um, so the Research and Writing Center became an integral part of my personal education while I was working there, particularly as it related to the humanities competencies that we hear talked about so much in the humanities department at BYU. Um, so I'm going to walk through these and go through each one, just kind of as we go. So these are some quotes followed with what I learned and how they apply. So from the competencies, disciplines in the humanities encourage you to think of yourself as a writer, as someone who isn't intimidated by the opportunity to create your own narrative. This is something that really matters at the Research and Writing Center. Um, at working there, I learned that every student is a writer, that each individual is the best person to tell their own story, and that tutors can foster voice and creativity as they teach. Each of these became integral uh, changes to how I saw other writers. Um, information literacy. Effective interpretation involves processing and translating your ideas and then communicating those ideas using conventions dictated by the situation. That's a little bit of a mouthful, but what this meant for me is that writing is a process that starts long before the writer puts pen to paper or fingers to keyboard. Um, and the tutors can facilitate writing through friendly and meaningful conversation that seeks to help students better interpret their world. Um, I said I'd mention this later, but cultural navigation is the third one and uh, one of my favorites. Um, so this is what the competencies have to say about that. Individuals who are culturally literate possess a clear sense of their own cultural values and the challenges resulting from interactions across differing backgrounds and perspectives. What this actually meant for me is that communication across cultures and languages is valuable and enriching, and specifically, as I did at the Research and Writing Center, tutors can play a unique role in assisting multilingual writers um, who have amazing voices and stories to tell. Um, one of the most important things I did at the Research and Writing Center was craft a philosophy statement, which I basically had to work through some of these questions. What made my work valuable? Um, and what's the most important thing I can get from my work? Um, so I decided to build on some past experience. This is a photo of me at UVU uh, working with the Intercollegiate Ethics Bowl team. I'm right there in the top corner. Um, <laughs> Just kind of grinning. While there, I learned about ethics of care, which inform caring relationships as a mode of interacting with others. Um, so this led directly to my philosophy statement. Um, this is a long quote, uh, so I'll have to summarize it. But the most important thing is this back part. Uh, Tutors have unique potential to practice and articulate bold compassion and exceptional care. This informed the rest of my experience at the Research and Writing Center and beyond, um, as I've continued to work with multi uh, multilingual writers and have pursued a grant that is allowing me to build on my philosophy statement, uh, I received that grant, so that's really exciting. Um, in summary, my English Plus experience at the Research and Writing Center was a pivotal moment in my education that amplified my classroom learning and connected my past studies in ethics with my future in English, uh, which to me is irreplaceable. Uh, it's basically served as a bridge between my past and where I want to go. Um, you can find some further information here, rwc.byu.edu, and I would encourage every English major and people outside the major to apply. Um, it's a valuable opportunity. So yeah, that is my experience. Hey guys, how's it going? Okay, good. I'm Hannah, and today I'm going to tell you about my internship with Scalability in Salt Lake City, where we create content for other companies who are trying to scale up. So, what's with all the dragons? Well, as it so happens, 
I am a fantasy novelist. So I'm going to tell you the story of my internship through the framework of an epic adventure. Because it was definitely already an adventure. <laughs> As a creative writer, I am a primarily creative being. And Scalability decided to have me work with their biggest client, now CFO, an accounting firm. I was writing trainings for accountants. <laughs> so here's my field of expertise in rainbow fantasy la la land. And way over there is my internship across the goalie of death, the mountain of tribulation, and the tangled forest of technical skill. <laughs> my internship was certainly a worthy adversary. But today, I want to talk to you about why that was actually a good thing. Because a story isn't strong without a worthy adversary. And neither is a hero. Before English Plus, I was actually really struggling in my writing. I felt like I didn't have time, and then when I did, I, was, I had writer's block or I couldn't focus. So I honestly felt like I didn't deserve to call myself a writer during that time. So, as you can probably guess, my attitude towards getting an internship was not great. I was busy, I told myself I didn't need the professional skills because I was going to be a stay-at-home novelist, but skipping was not an option. So, the process of starting my internship faced me with a lot of unfamiliar things right away, such as a three-round interview process, and then actually going into the office once a week and facing the scary professional culture. <laughs> Not to mention the job itself. My daily quests included any combination of the following. Simple PowerPoint design, writing manuals, grading interactive trainings, and the bulk of my job, writing the trainings. And throughout my first month or so in the office, I started to realize maybe there was a place for me there and my creativity, because I could use my creativity to innovate and problem solve. But that's not the only thing I realized, because I started to learn things. The first thing I learned has to do with the fact that I was new at everything. I had to accept a lot of criticism and constructive feedback on my work. And I also had to become really good at being concise, which is something I am historically terrible at. But that's not all, because when writing is your job, you can't just say, oh, I had writer's block. You can't. You have to do it anyways. <laughs> so I learned some discipline, some structuring and outlining skills, and how to synthesize information quickly. And then finally, I learned how to communicate with my supervisor by asking, um, asking questions that clarified my projects and advocating for myself in a job, which is something I have never really done before. Throughout the semester, I started to realize this job was a complement to my novel writing, not a distraction. And as a bonus, it was different enough to not be redundant or make creative writing feel like a chore. Specifically in my writing, I started to notice myself being more concise and also understanding where being concise would be helpful to me, which is leaps and bounds ahead of where I was before. Secondly, my outlining and structuring skills also translated over. So in my novel writing, now I can write a thousand words in an hour easily, where before I would only stare at the blank screen. And then finally, I've gained a lot more confidence in myself and my writing. So in the past, I never really attempted to get my novels out there, but now I'm finally starting the, project, the process of pitching my novels, which is great. I thought a professional job would be opposite to me, but that's actually what ended up making it so useful, because my creative weaknesses are empowered by critical competence. And guess what? At the end of the semester, they hired me on as a part-time employee. I still work for Scalability, and I've come to find a lot of enjoyment in that. I honestly think everyone should have something like this. So. I challenge you all to find a worthy adversary that contrasts with your field of experience because it will target your personal weaknesses and turn you into an unmistakable hero in your own epic adventure. Thank you. college student, I am constantly asked three questions. Number one, where are you from? Are you dating anybody? And what are you studying? 
So, after I ask the last question, I wait for the answer that undoubtedly comes, or the question that comes. What are you going to do with an English major? Now, this is no surprise. I'm constantly asked this, I'm sure we all are, and it's a question that I even ask myself. Many majors on campus transition easily to a specific career, but the humanities major is not as lucky. But today I want to share with you two experiences I've had where I've used the skills as an English major and where they've been completely invaluable in my work. This past semester, I participated in BYU's Washington Seminar. So essentially, essentially Washington Seminar is a study abroad meets internship where Monday through Thursday students are working at an internship and on Friday they have class studies. So not only did this allow me to gain a great understanding of DC, but I learned so much. I interned at the Department of Education in the Office of Legislation and Congressional Affairs, meaning my office was the liaison between Congress and the Department of Education. As part of my position, I attended dozens of congressional hearings and forums related to education policy. I was tasked with drafting summaries in a very specific legislative format. And although many of my fellow interns were nervous about this new genre of writing, I was not because the English major allows us great knowledge of how to write in different forms. I was actually sick this day, and so they cropped me in. So that's why that looks funny. <laughs> um, and I've already learned MLA, APA in Chicago, and so learning a new style guide wasn't that intimidating. Additionally, as I attended these events, I knew what was important to include in the briefs for my supervisors. As English majors, we have unique abilities to dissect large amounts of information effectively and communicate and effectively and quickly. And we've been trained how to interpret language and communicate well. Few college graduates have had the exposure to the written word that we have. Another opportunity I've had is working at BYU alumni for the past two years as a writer and as a social media specialist. I spend the majority of my time finding interesting alumni and writing articles about them for the magazine. Obviously, my reading and writing skills have been very useful during this. I'm able to quickly read through interview transcripts, identify important information, and effectively relay my ideas through the written word. But more than that, however, literature has taught me that everyone has a story. And I've spent the vast majority of my college career reading things from Beowulf to things fall apart. Literature has helped me connect with people, and perhaps more importantly, to know how to connect with people. As I interview various alumni, I'm constantly looking to understand them. And thanks to my English skills, I'm able to know how to do so. First off, Chaucer teaches me that everybody has a story, no matter how bizarre it may seem. And the Virginia Woolf inside me teaches me to focus on their thoughts. What are they thinking? How, what's going through their mind? And William Wordsworth has taught me to focus on the places around them. How are they influenced by their physical landscapes? And perhaps most importantly, Leo Tolstoy reminds me to keep it short, because if it's too long, nobody's going to want to read it, even if it's brilliant. <laughs> Putting on my English major hat while I interview alumni and write their stories, I'm able to discover who they are, understand their cultures, and connect with their deepest values. In short, I've been taught how to understand the nuances and complexities of the human experiences because of my English major. I want to close by sharing some advice I once received from Bryce Peterson. Now, in one of my first classes, I was very unfamiliar with writing literary criticism, and I was overwhelmed by the vast array of scholarship written on seemingly every topic. I was unclear of how I could possibly add anything unique to the story and the conversation. Who was I to add to or disagree with anything Terry Eagleton has said? Bryce responded simply, if you can read, you can have an opinion. As English majors, we've certainly been blessed with endless reading that has filled our brains with new ideas. So we're always going to get asked, what is, are you going to do with an English major? And I'm sure all of us have asked this question ourselves. However, we learn skills that are transferable in so many different things. Writing and persuading well, analyzing effectively, and understanding human nature are necessary in almost any career. So entering the workforce, we are armed with a unique ability to think clearly, develop creative solutions, and propose new ideas. And for the amount that we've read, we've certainly earned the right to have an opinion. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Matea Gigi. I am a graduate from BYU, obviously. So on the board, you can see a scene from the movie Robots. Uh, I love this scene because just one small domino knocks over all of these other dominoes and eventually creates a really cool picture. 
So today I want to talk about how my English Plus experiences were like that first domino that turned into um, a whole mindset change for me and a whole career path. When I first transferred to BYU in 2020, I thought I was going to be a social media manager. That is because I googled what to do with an English degree and a blog post said, hey, um, English majors make great social media managers. So that was what I was going to do. But then in the summer of 2021, I was looking for an internship and the one that got back to me was an internship at TechBuzz, which is a Utah-based tech news website. Um, so I became an intern there. And I thought it was just going to be a check-the-box internship, get done, move on, but it ended up being so much more. Um, the first thing I learned at this internship was the power and importance of communication. I was the only remote intern out of seven interns, and so I felt like I needed to communicate with my supervisors regularly so they wouldn't forget me. So I talked to them every single day. Um, because I talked to my supervisors so regularly, I was given more assignments than other interns and wrote more articles than other interns, which led to being able to understand the voice of the company really quickly. While writing for TechBuzz, I also found my love of telling stories. I wrote about amazing CEOs that did crazy things for their job for their companies. They left behind great jobs to start and found companies. They sometimes paid their employees and didn't pay themselves when times were hard. Um, and I learned a lot from all of these um, founders and these stories that I got to tell. So the three month internship ended and I realized I did not want to be a social media manager. I don't even use social media that much, so I don't know where that was coming from. Um, I realized that I loved writing and I wanted to continue doing it. So I stayed at TechBuzz as a part-time writer for another year and a half. And at this time, I wrote a series about Polynesian entrepreneurs. I supervised three other interns. I went to a ton of tech conferences, but ultimately I gained confidence in my skills as a writer. So this confidence was another domino that led me to multiple TA positions here at BYU where I helped other interns, and, well, other students in their internships. And it also led me to LDS PMA, a club here at BYU, where I was first on the board and then the BYU chapter president. LDS PMA is a community for Latter-day Saints in publishing, media, and the arts. It's still going on here at BYU, so you should check it out if you have not heard of them. They are awesome. Um, and then my confidence in writing also led me to help in Sandbox. You may have heard of Sandbox. Sandbox is the BYU Business School's startup incubator where software developers, graphic designers, and project managers come together and try to create successful tech startups. Um, I was encouraged to participate in Sandbox and helped Dr. Balzotti, one of our writing and rhetoric professors, create and run a class that put seven of us English majors into um, Sandbox. Um, because of my writing background, I was the lead content writer and um, supervised the other content writers in our myriad of projects. While in this tech incubator, I worked um, closely with many other people and we did a lot of research. Um, my main job was helping them decide if their business ideas were worth pursuing. Uh, I, like I said, I worked with a lot of groups. I had two main groups that I worked with, and at first it was super intimidating because none of them were English majors, obviously. They were in other um, majors, and at first I didn't think we would get along. But I quickly realized that we actually got along really well, um, and that is because we had all these different educational backgrounds coming together to work together, and I got along better with my um, sandbox groups than I have with a lot of my um, English major only groups. So um, this new idea about groups and my growing skills in research um, eventually led me to sit in an interview for a copywriter position where I got to talk about uh, my time at Sandbox and my time at TechBuzz and how they shaped me. So now I've graduated from BYU and now I work full time for Strut as a copywriter and admin assistant. Um, at this job, I communicate regularly. I have to work with people from different educational backgrounds and I do a lot of research, among other things. So both of my English Plus experiences led me to opportunities that led me to opportunities that led me to where I am today. Besides um, a job as a copywriter, I'm currently ghostwriting a book for an entrepreneur I met at TechBuzz, and 
uh, freelancing for a myriad of other companies. Thanks to my English Plus beginnings, um, I changed my original idea about what it meant to be an English major and what I could do with that degree. And I want you all to get excited about your future English Plus experiences and realize that they could be the first domino in a crazy new chain reaction of what your career and professional life could be. Hi, I'm Mariah Fry. Um, I am interested in studying, studying Gothic literature, um, old books. Uh, Jane Eyre is a classic example. I want to talk to people like this, and I want to read. That's my passion. And I uh, have one problem. I don't know how to present myself in interviews, or on a resume, or in anything that isn't an essay on why Charlotte Bronte is the best. So I wasn't sure exactly how to navigate this. Fast forward, I'm at BYU. I'm filling out my registration requirements, and there is Provo City Lab. Looks easier than an internship and cheaper. So I decided to sign up. And while I was there, <laughs> became quickly aware of how um, intimidating the professionals I was working with were. In that class, I was working with city planners to improve Provo's walkability. They were the epitome of professionalism, and I was taking baby steps. Um, but over the process of the semester, I developed greater competencies in my resume, in my interviewing capacities, and in my communication abilities in a professional setting. I actually made a lot of great friends. I don't know if we bonded like this, but we did bond, and we had a lot of fun, um, and in fact, we made a little bit of a friend group. So I would say if you only take this class for the teamwork experiences, take the class. I also studied alone. Um, a lot of the assignments of this class required that you did um, digital dialogues once a week. And in that time, there was a lot of room for self-reflection on what you can specifically bring to the workforce. And I felt like a champ. So I um, was able to analyze why I specifically was competent in the workforce and how I can let those qualities shine in an, inter in an interview. So. Then the big project began. I wanted to insert a meme somewhere. This felt appropriate. So I, uh, there was a large project that we were required to complete for this class in which we offered a um, plan to improve Provo, a specific section. So again, we collab I collaborated with my teammates, and we got to work on very specific niche areas of Provo. Not niche. Areas that I wouldn't have noticed in Provo. And I uh, came to the conclusion that we could, well, we came to a lot of conclusions. We wrote a draft, and we wrote it again, and again, and again, and eventually, over this evolution of writing, came up with um, a paper that the city planners that I was so scared about earlier, they approved of, and we were presenting it, we presented it to the city council. They looked upon it very favorably, and we are actually, are actually implementing some of the plans that our class presented. Incredibly exciting. Um, and they also, liked it a lot. The um, city planners we worked with were very um, pleased with our station area plan. Oh, that's right there. And um, as a consequence, we were able to, again, um, practice our professionalism. And uh, that led to the last half of the class, which was specifically geared to preparing you for interviews. We know how to talk as English majors. That's a stereotype, but maybe not in an interview. So this practice gave me the confidence I needed to not only excel in this class, but to feel more prepared as somebody who wants to earn money, who wants to um, excel in my life, not just in the classroom. Again, said my memes. Um, and so I, I, felt I came out of this feeling prepared and feeling more competent than I realized I would have. I think this is a necessary class if you want to feel prepared and confident in your degree. Overall, these experiences compiled into um, my own personal resume, not one that I show anybody else, but one that I hold for myself of, I know that I have an English major, and it's not just because I love books, it's because I think I have something valuable to offer the world. And I think you should do the same. I think that you are all incredible, intelligent people 
and you can make the most of your degree if you know how to present it. And this class can facilitate that. So thank you very much. And have a day there. All right, would you mind one more time, let's thank all of our presenters. All right, I'm going to ask, invite the presenters to come up and grab a chair and sit on the stage. You can climb up the fun way or go around, either way works. Um, I really appreciate the effort that these students put into their presentations. Um, and the experiences that they are willing to share with us. So now we have the opportunity to ask them some questions. Um, you can ask about specific experiences or broader questions. Uh, I didn't introduce myself. I'm the internship coordinator in the English department, and so you can ask questions to me as well if you have specific questions about how to fulfill English Plus. Tell me if I am, oh no, there are enough, okay. I, I thought I counted right, so. All right. And we do have a microphone here that we can pass around to panelists. All right, do we have any questions? Let's jump right in. Thank you. Hi. I, I love that. I love this, your presentations. Thank you so much. Um, I have a question for Hannah and Matea. So uh, how familiar are you with artificial intelligence, chat, GPT? My husband is a software engineer, so okay. pretty familiar. So, and, and I wonder, Matea, if you've used it at work already? No. Not yet? Okay. So, I, I'm just wondering, like, these things that we love to teach, how is that going to change as a result of artificial intelligence? And that can be an answer to any of you who has an opinion about that. <laughs> what I tell people, <coughs> what I tell people is that there will always be editors and writers make great editors, so even if like a chat GPT is going to create the content, we will still need to edit it and work through it anyways. So we will always be needed, I think, personally. I also think it's important to remember that these AIs feed off of their own um, results and stuff. So if all of the writers dropped out of like the economy, the the AIs would stop like working because they would just feed off themselves and become super redundant. If you play with um, the new Bing AI and you talk to it too long, uh, my husband and I were doing it, and at, at a certain point it would just stop saying like comprehensible things and it would just say a single word over and over and over and over and over and over. And over. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not too worried. <laughs> Thanks. Other questions? Yes. I just had a question about the, the Washington seminar yeah. and just how, how did you get involved and how did you end up with the Department of Education as opposed to what the other options are when you go there? Yeah, so what's really great about the Washington seminar is it doesn't give you a specific internship you have to do. And okay. so they do have a database of a bunch of different internships that BYU students have been connected with in the past. But you get accepted to the program, which means you have housing and you have your classes on Friday, but then you're in charge of finding your own internship. And so you're able to look at all different things. And so in the Washington seminar last semester when I was there, there were people from lots of different majors. And so it brings together a large variety of people who are all doing very different things. And so it just provides you a platform and a way of people to connect with in order to find an internship that fits you specifically. Yes. All right, who else? While you're thinking, I'm going to ask. So, um, Hannah, you mentioned that you like weren't very excited about doing an internship. Um, anyone else share those feelings on the panel or in the audience? Anyone else see this requirement as a thorn in your side or a chore you're not very excited about? Or were you guys just all primed and ready to go? <laughs> okay, I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my experience, you're not the only one. <laughs> Um, so, um, if, you're, if somebody's feeling that way, what would you advise them? Yeah, well, I think, obviously for me, it ended up turning out to be helpful to my initial goal, which is writing novels. So I would say to look for something that is going to help you in your goals and your pursuits, and just 
try to think of a way, because I totally understand. Sometimes when, when there's something extra you have to do, you're like, this is going to be so stressful. It's going to take up so much of my life. I can't handle this. But if you take a different approach and say, hey, this is going to help me in all the things that I'm already dealing with, and just find a way for it to be that thing for you. One of our um, alumni at one point said, made, made a comment to the effect of no experience is wasted. So if you can go, if you can think of it with that attitude, I think you'll get a lot out of it. Um, any other questions? Yes. Um, for those of you who did an internship where you didn't really think it related to what you were studying or what you wanted to do in the future, how are you able to kind of create opportunities um, to get experience in the places you want to get experience? <laughs> I can speak to that a little bit. I would say that um, sometimes English is this sort of niche, it's seen, seen as this sort of niche desire where you just like read and study and write all day, right? But the reality is that um, one of the greatest strengths of an English major is communicating interpersonally in a workspace. So no matter where you work, there will be humans and you will need to be able to communicate with the humans. And um, often, a lot of positions, from what I'm aware, uh, rely on people with an English background to um, relay like their capacities in communication to help strengthen everybody. So no matter what you do, um, again, no experience is wasted. If you go into, so for example, I went to, a, I was trying to improve like Provo as a city, improve its walkability. You know, I don't see how that's related to Gothic literature at all. But by working in a team, I was able to understand how my um, my creativity or my perspective can really enhance the overall product that we're looking for, whatever that is. So whether you're trying to become a professor, become a writer, become whatever, um, knowing how to communicate with people who have different views than you do and how to present yourself as a competent um, contributor to the workforce is um, imp and deeply impactful, both in your self-confidence and in your experience in that situation. Any other ideas from, yeah, Just watching. Oh, it's on. Oh, we, have to, we have to keep convincing it too. Okay. I'm, oh, it's working. Perfect. Just watching it come down to me. Um, one of my thoughts that I had of um, hearing your question, um, sometimes I think as we're considering what we want to do with our majors, we sometimes can fall into a pattern of almost like restricting ourselves in, in what we want to do. I remember when I was first, when I first came to BYU, my goal was to do a scholarly trajectory working in the academic field of video game studies, which is pretty you're not going to find an internship, probably, for that. Um, and so my advice to people who have interests that are a little bit more specific and are worried about finding an internship is, is maybe don't, don't worry so much about forcing it. I think, for me, a lot of the connections that I started to see between work that I had done previously and what I was doing in the Writing Center came while I was in the Writing Center, um, including uh, Tyler Gardner, the director of the Writing Center, sharing with me a book that people have written that is the intersection between game studies and work in the Writing Center, which is, who would have thought that, that book is out there? Um, I, I, I certainly wouldn't have. So my advice, I think, would be to just maybe, when you're looking for things, look for things that are interesting and not always things that line up with the specific thing you want to do, because I think one of the benefits that we have as scholars in the humanities and as critical thinkers is that we will make those connections as we go into new lines of work, as we meet new people and have a diverse body of experiences. Okay. Anyone else want to talk to that? I don't want to talk too much, but I don't So in my internship, I like felt like it was irrelevant to what I wanted to do. Um, so I can really relate to that. But I think there was something about me that I thought that my identity was like a creative person, and so I couldn't like identify with like the training, uh, writing accounting training, which. But I think sometimes we we underestimate how working in things that seem irrelevant can actually help us in the things that we're working on. 
And what I mean by that is sometimes you have to embrace the opposite of yourself to the extent that it makes you whole. Because as a creative person, for example, I struggle with structure and stuff, and so do other creative people like me. So the people who embrace that opposite thing, um, or that thing that feels irrelevant, and find ways to help it to address their personal weaknesses, those are the people who are going to stand out among other people like them. I might just add again from things I've heard from alumni, it's this, like you need to have a plan, you need to have an idea of where you're going, and at the same time be open to new opportunities, and be open to how the experiences you have maybe change your plan or help refine your plan as you go. That it's important to have both sides of that, and not just be focused on one, one path only. Okay, what other questions do we have? Thank you, those of you who have talked. I know Julia talked a little bit about being surprised, so maybe if you guys would share what surprised you most about your experience. Um, I mean, that it wasn't Austin land. Yeah, but. definitely it was not Austin land, I can say that much. Um, I think the thing that surprised me the most about my internship was, I kind of, I mean, I kind of talked about it in my presentation, but was I kind of want to do it with the mindset of like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here, but I'm just going to try and like learn whatever I can. And I think the biggest thing that surprised me was that just because I was inexperienced didn't mean that I wasn't qualified. There were a lot of things that um, I felt like I ended up doing really well at that I wasn't expecting. And so that was kind of like a pleasant surprise that I ran into, but yeah. Anybody else want to share anything that surprised them most about their internship experience? I thank you. Um, and by the way, I meant, I meant to say this earlier. Thank you guys for coming. I'm impressed that you guys came because I probably would not have come if I wasn't presenting. But I will in the future. So I'm. I'm <laughs> this is I'm trying to roast. But um, anyway, and thank you guys um, for these amazing questions. I did want to say that. Something that surprised me was how immediately relevant it felt to my experience as an English major. Um, again, I think that uh, it's easy to feel like you're in this bubble and you're only, as an English major, useful with words. But the reality is that words are what construct everything about the human experience, right? Like, and I think that's partly what draws us to language and to writing and to all of these things is it's so immediately relevant to everything about the world we're living in. And so um, understanding how I can just present that, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but basically um, knowing that your specific capacities as someone studying English are needed, like you are all needed for your competencies in the professional world. There's this rumor, this, this lie that English majors aren't um, as valuable as somebody with an engin engineering degree or maybe a numbers-based study, something like that. And that's simply a lie, right? We need, we need people who are language-oriented. And um, no matter what you study in life, that understanding of language and that fascination with story or whatever it is you're specifically interested in about the English major will help you. And so um, go out there, like do your internship because you are prepared. You may not feel like it. I didn't feel like it. I think that's something a lot of people here can, to attest, here can attest to, but um, this, you are smarter than you think, basically. Um, and an English major is important. And so I think that's the exciting thing about the internship is you realize just how important your English major is in a very applicable world, like real life situation. So, thank you. Oh, no, go ahead, let's finish this. Okay, okay. Um, I just wanted to say, um, so I worked a lot with like tech people in the tech sector um, and uh, what surprised me was how there were actual, like there's a lot of stories to tell even though it felt very boring at first. <laughs> I remember one time I sat in an, intern, or an interview with uh, my boss and the CEO of the company and the CEO was like, so how do you want to go about this? And like I have a personal side of the story about how I started my company and a technical side 
my boss was like, oh, the technical side. So he went on about how he had started this company because the time was right and the market was good. And like half an hour later, I finally um, had a chance to ask, like, well, can I ask about like the personal side? And he went on about how he had a near-death experience and how this changed his whole idea of what he wanted to do with his life. And so he wanted to start a company that meant something. And like, it was really cool that I was like, oh, this isn't just like a technical company about batteries. Like, he actually had something he wanted to do with his life. And so that's what I really enjoyed and found exciting about my internship. Yeah, go ahead. I have a question for Sydney. Um, so how did you go about finding an internship that applied your English skills, but that was more about social awareness and represented under um, underrepresented populations? Um, so I was really lucky. Um, I, um, I when I came to BYU, I, I had no plans of studying um, any kind of Native American anything. It just was not in my plan at all. Um, and I took a class from someone in the English department, Mike Taylor, and he is one of the associate directors of the American Indian Studies program. Um, and he hired me on as a research assistant, uh, studying different like Native American massacres and like more research with MMIW. Um, and he introduced me to NACI. Um, so that's how I kind of like fell into my internship. I didn't really have to like go searching for it, so I was really lucky. Um, but I guess as far as like advice I could give you is to um, like really be close with your professors. Um, I found that most of your professors, if not all, hopefully all of them, um, really want you to succeed and really want you to do well and to find internships and job opportunities that you're interested in. Um, and so find those professors who you know teach about, you know, like underrepresented groups or things that you're interested in um, and get to know them and work with them and I can promise that they are going to point you in the right direction. So I guess that's, that's the only advice I could give you. Thank you. It's good advice. <laughs> um, any other questions? Michaela, where are we on time? We have lots of time. Um, what I might propose then, well, I have a couple more questions, but then I think we'll open it up for more casual conversation. If you want to come up and talk to the presenters, ask them more questions specifically about their experiences or connect with people. Networking is a really great way to find an opportunity or to just learn more about what you might want to do. So I hope you take advantage of that. But. Um, do you feel like the experiences, oh, so this is totally a leading question, sorry. Um, has English Plus, has your experience with English Plus met our goal of helping you learn how to translate your skills and narrate them and be better prepared for graduation? I mean, that's a yes or no question, so maybe is there, can you give us a little testimonial about English Plus? Who wants to, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I can go, just since I am already holding this. Um, <laughs> But I think my experiences with Macy have absolutely like bettered my English experience and have absolutely prepared me for graduation. Um, I talked about this, but a lot of my work with Macy was research-based. Um, and as an English major, you're hopefully all familiar with finding sources. Um, but my research with Macy has really taught me how to find like the best sources. Um, and how to navigate like that online world because there's a lot of information out there. Um, so as far as that goes, um, it, it's been almost like a symbiotic relationship. Like my experiences with NACI have helped me be a better English major and my experiences as an English major have helped me to be a better intern. Um, and we've talked a lot about um, in our presentations about like the competencies of being in the humanities, and definitely um, my work with NACI has helped me um, be better able to navigate different cultures, obviously mostly Native American culture for me, um, but it's helped me be more information literate with the research that I do. Um, so yeah, my, my, that's my plug for English Plus, is it's definitely worth it, and it might seem like a lot of work on top of all of the other things you already have to do, um, but in the long run, it, it definitely prepares you better, I think, for real world experiences than, than just sitting in classrooms all day, so. 
Um, yeah, so I'm graduating this semester, and so I've been going through the process of looking at what I'm doing after and finding a job. And what I've been seeing is so many of these jobs will say entry level, two or three years experience. And I think if it's an entry level job, how am I supposed to have these two to three years of experience? Um, and at first it's really intimidating, but then I realized that because of internships and different jobs that I've been able to do, I do have those experiences. And I was, um, this past week I've had a lot of job interviews, and the things that I've been allowed to speak about with my internship, and then with this job at BYU alumni, that it does provide a unique ability to talk about experiences, even if it's masked behind the idea of having an internship. That when you are doing real world things, um, that you are given an opportunity to present what you've learned in the classroom and you're given an opportunity then to have future things to talk about. And I think it can be intimidating, but you have to start somewhere. And English Plus provides a wonderful area and kind of a comfort bubble as well of starting somewhere, but knowing it's just an internship. Um, and so it can be great experiences. Um, I'll, I'll talk. So I graduated in December, so I did it. Um, and I can definitely test that my English Plus experiences helped me um, get ready for uh, where I am now. Like I said in my interview, or in my um, presentation, in the interview for the job that I have now, I got to explain um, what I did in, in both of my English Plus um, internships. And um, to go along with what Meg said, you, a lot of these entry level jobs, they ask for like two to three years of experience beforehand, and that can be um, an internship, and that's something that you can work on now while you're still in school, so that when you do graduate, you're ready um, to apply for those jobs and um, have the experience for them. So, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah, so speaking to my experience a little bit, um, as a transfer student, I lost a lot of credits moving to BYU, so I've been at school for an extremely long time. Um, <laughs> And one of the things that I really liked about doing this English Plus experience is that it gave me opportunities that I really didn't get anywhere else in my experience up to this point. Um, you know, you can take class after class after class, but opportunities for engagement in the classroom can be uh, not non-existent, but they're definitely a little, a little bit more um, mediated than they are. Um, working at the Writing Center, I've had opportunities to work with people from all across BYU's community. Um, we have a lot of non-traditional students and a lot of multilingual writers. We have members of the queer community. Um, and I think like being able to work with a lot of different people one-on-one -on -one and talk through things that I've learned in my classes before or experiences that I've had um, has helped me, I think, come to a better sense of where I've come in my education and who I am. So if we're talking about the goal of English Plus is to help us narrate our experiences or, or narrate ourselves. I think that working at the Research and Writing Center um, has helped me to, I don't know, gain a vocabulary for that a little bit, right? As I've talked through it and as I've worked through it, I've found ways of expressing that better than I'd ever found before. So. Thank you. Don't want to cut anybody off, but all right. Thank you all so much for sharing your insights and your experiences with us. Um, just a couple more reminders. The alumni panel next week come here from four graduates from our program, Thursday at 11 in B092. And don't forget to the, um, use the QR code on your programs to give feedback about this session. One more round of applause for our presenters. And we welcome